no, 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 no. You done got me talking politics. America has opened her arms to those who dreamed of a better life in search of opportunity, equality, and freedom. And so it is in this proud tradition that America once again welcomes her newest aliens. Coneheads. They're from another planet? That theory has been advanced. I am ready to suck back a cold one. Ah. Welcome to the United States. And so the saga begins of a family unlike any you've ever known. <laughs> this summer, and open wider, their name will live in history. Very sorry, Mr. Conehead. Conehead. My name is Conehead. Coneheads. Holy fucking shit. Okay, so real quick, you're over in Florida now, right? I am Florida man, and if I say that one more time, AJ is going to slap me. She said, <laughs> you've got to stop with the Florida man. <laughs> she said, you you got to give it a rest, man. <laughs> oh, but it's the novelty of it right now. <laughs> I know. So you probably didn't get hit with <clears throat> that string of storms that they went up through from Texas. Yeah, I heard something about that, but um, right. yeah, no, we, we get some light, you know, light rain today. Oh, okay. So, I don't even know. This is how frazzled I am. What day is today? Today is Wednesday. Uh, yes, Wednesday. Okay. I, okay. I missed a meeting today. So, like, I looked at my calendar. I'm like, oh, fuck. That was supposed to be this morning. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Yep, whoopsie. Yeah, so that's when I found out it was Wednesday. Mm. Yeah, we got a big storm Monday. Sunday night. Well, the, uh, man, fuck this. Okay. The other day, <laughs> we got a really All big right. storm. And our basement, the little, you know, we live in one of those neighborhoods, one of those really old neighborhoods that people are like, oh, yeah, you know, some water will come up in the basement. <laughs> but I've never really been happy about that. Yeah, of course. So we had, we had, there was a little bit of water up, you know, but it was around the drainage hole where the uh, washer, the clothes washer drains. Okay. I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll have, you know, the plumber just check it out to make sure before it gets bad. But then we got a fuckload of rain. The river flooded. Uh, the street was flooded. My trash can washed half a block down the street. Oh, no. Uh, I caught it before it smashed into a car. Um, well, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. And then, but then a bunch of water came up in through the basement. So I've been having people in and over. Got to have like the basement sterilized and throw a fuckload of shit away. Oh no! And then the plumber today found. This is how fucked up our neighborhood uh, is. So our house is a hundred years old, and I'm thinking that the house to our back used to just be a yard, you know? And, and But you had a bunch of skeletons wash up into your basement from the yard. Am I almost, right? Almost. Almost. That would have been cooler. <laughs> okay. That would have been way fucking cooler. Instead, yeah, kind of like, like the pool and poltergeist, right? Yeah. That that would have been much... I, I, I The way I am right now, I want to move out of this house. Because... Oh, man. That's they, a We've been here almost 10 years... Yeah. And uh, this is uh, uh, the basement flooded right the day after my son was born. And then we had to deal with all that shit. And then today we found out that 129 feet from my house, there is a crack in the pipe. But since it is my pipe, I have to pay for it. Even though it's like in my neighbor's underneath my neighbor's driveway. Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah, and there are closer access points to the sewer system. So, yeah, they they found it. It is 
Yeah, 129, 130 feet away, underneath my neighbor's driveway. It's a rental, and the landlord also lives in Florida, bringing it back to you. So <laughs> I have been waiting for a year f for to hear back from them about their walnut tree. Uh, that I don't know if it was you and I recording, but it hangs over my garage. And every once in a while, you know, with a windstorm, branches come down or whatever. But sometimes just a bunch of walnuts will come slamming down on my roof. I won't know what's going <laughs> okay. on. Okay. I'm assuming, you know, insurance doesn't like to cover anything. So just a bunch of fucking bills and a house that I'm mad at. But first wow. world problems, right? Like I own a house. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And look at it this way, man. I mean, if there's anyone I know that that can that can get with the city and make it happen, it's it's got to be it's got to be my 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 politically activated buddy. I would hope so. We'll we'll see we'll see how that goes. But thank you so much for being flexible with all of this shit and all the moving stuff around. And um, yeah, well, well you know, if I don't cut. Uh, if I keep any of our preamble in, I don't know if I'm going to cut this part out or not, but like the people that are coming to unshitify my basement are supposed to be oh, coming, Jesus. coming in the next few <laughs> are days. They, are they, are they cone heads? They come from France. <laughs> well, dude, if they come from France, they, they know plumbing. They, and they know, they know broken, busted pipes, and they know catacombs, right? With right? skeletons in them. So, so I think you're in good hands. Yeah, so we should be in good hands. But, yeah, the, the wife was like, you know what? Let's move. And she just kind of got me whipped up right. in a fervor. And I was like, yeah, fuck this place. But anyway. Right. So I even moved. So even by human – so even by human standards – that house isn't worth living in. <laughs> no, nah, it's I'm I'm making it a bigger than it. <clears throat> well, I mean, it is going to be a big pain in the ass and everything. I guess it's going to be a way to realize what I actually want to keep from my basement. As long as you didn't see Mr. Hanky floating by on a leaf, I think you're OK. <laughs> I uh, know we were trying to keep this a little shorter than usual, so you already did one uh, one segue attempt. I uh, I can bring us back towards that. I I moved four blocks from my old apartment to this house. Okay. And then that happened, but I did not come from Remulac, like Beldar, and and, Primat, and the and Belda the pack. That's Beldar right. Primat. And Primat. And um, Connie is an American oh, yeah. citizen. If you don't know what we're talking about, you are either don't remember Saturday Night Live or you don't remember the Coneheads movie from the 1990s. I mean, we should. Well, let's let's get we can get the movie introduced. Coneheads is from 1993. I mean, I figured this was kind of like a. A base movie. There's going to be a couple things from the movie that we're going to talk about, but like usual, we kind of picked a movie that is really easy to summarize, so we can just talk about however the fuck we want. Um, but yeah, you know, the main stars in this are Dan Aykroyd, Jane Curtin. There's Chris Farley, uh, what Jason Alexander as the neighbor, Michael McKeon as. Uh, <laughs> What was the department back guess, then? It's changed so many not times. A, it was way before. It was way before ICE. So yeah, it was before ICE. It was before the Department of Homeland Security. Yeah. No, but they, at least they still were thinking ahead, right? To the electrified, <laughs> electrified fence, fencing. I mean, yeah, he 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 had a he he would do well in today's ICE. Or Department of uh, Department of Homeland Security. What well, Michael McKeon was Seedling was that his last name in the movie? Yes, yeah. you, it, it 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 was Seedling. I keep thinking of David Saint Hubbins. Oh yeah, from uh, Spinal Tap. No but, uh, 
There were a bunch of stand-up comedians in the movie, like Sinbad. Oh my god, Eddie. Yeah, Griffin, it was a who's who. Uh, Absolute who's who. Live people. Adam Sandler. So, as often, we had a topic and we found the movie to go with it. I th- I thought I saw Ellen DeGeneres as as the swim coach. Wouldn't wouldn't surprise me a bit. I I missed that, but uh, um, definitely wouldn't surprise me. I don't, I'm not sure what to compare it to. Sort of like a... Oh, fuck. It's kind of like a Saturday Night Live movie. Like it was. And oh, you're, totally. You're a big SNL fan, as we've talked never, about quite a few times. Never missed, never missed an episode. Ever. I guess before you get to the topic that we chose the movie for, do you remember the first time you saw the Coneheads? Like the, the, the skit or the movie? Were you excited about yeah, I, the movie when it came out, or was it, oh, okay. I was distracted when you came out. Now I'm happy to know you exist. Man, I'm, I'm, al- I'm always excited when an SNL skit makes it to the big screen. <clears throat> Although they're, they're less and less frequent, it seems, for some reason. Although that uh, the, current, the current season, dude, I was telling you about that, man. They've got a new, they've got a new head writer, and I think this dude was like, you know, like one of the writing, you know, team. What what do they used to call it? The writers' room or whatever. That like <laughs> they do... Kirk was in and shit. Yeah, yeah. But but the this this guy that's the head writer. I mean, I've just I haven't seen SNL this good for many many years, if not a couple of decades, man. Because um, you know it's comedy. It's all about timing and delivery. But it starts with writing. So. You know, these these skits, there's just a lot of surrealism, which I'm a huge fan of, right? So, you know, you've got like um the old British the old British comedy where you had so much surrealism in it. And uh SCTV, you you you're you were a fan of the, the Canadian SCTV network, right? Uh yeah, I, I have seen a few of those. That's where I've found out about uh what like Dave Thomas. That's right, and he was in. He was in this movie. Yes, so yeah, he was a conehead. He uh, was the main, the main conehead, right? Yes, the not for the Garthock. It was Dan Aykroyd, Canadian. Also, he was Canadian. He might still be. He might be both. Up. Oh, yep. He has dual mm-hmm. citizenship, but he's from Ottawa, Ontario. Oh well, there you go. Yeah, not from France, but from Canada. That's pretty, France. pretty close, right? Well, there, there's probably more French speakers in Canada than America. Although, you know, it's not like every part of Canada is Quebec, but I feel like educational systems and other things included. Sort of like how a lot of us took Spanish in school, but it was usually French or Spanish. Yeah, it could come in a, l- a lot more handy to speak Spanish, like especially where I grew up, Texas, made made a lot more sense. I did actually, I took, I, I don't know why, but for some reason I took French my first semester in high school. And the only thing I really remember from it was, uh, fat attention, fat attention, <laughs> la, la, fat attention. <laughs> like pay attention, Lance? <laughs> I think that's what it meant. <laughs> Sounds like I don't know, but I, uh, I kept asking the I, I, the only thing I I remember was asking the teacher what it, what does uh, what does coup d'état mean? Because a uh, a movie we both love, there's a song in there called Coup d'état, talking about Repo Man, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know why I got into French, dude. I, I I did I did French, and then I dropped it out as quick as I could and went to Spanish. Didn't do incredibly well in that either, unfortunately. I wasn't the most disciplined child. Ah, oh, I think I did better in Spanish in college than I did in high school. Well, for one thing, you're actually paying for college, right? That is true. So uh, have you, um, not, uh, sorry, man. No. I'm sort of manic right now, so I'm glad when you talk, because I'm just like, oh, oh, oh. Ah, there's a lot going on with you, dude. You Rivers know, you don't want to... Flowing down the yeah, street. Yes. Oh, man, dogs and cats living together. Ah! Mass hysteria. And I guess <laughs> since we are talking about um, immigration, 
and things like that. I did want to say, and I've been meaning to do this, but I am broadcasting from Stolen Land. Uh, that formerly... Yes, we are. I am too. What a coincidence. Uh, I'm, I imagine most American and Canadian podcasts are. Um, the people who used to live where I live were the Mia Mia, the Shawandak, and the Shawnee, the Kakaskia, and the Hopewell people. Ohio is a native word. There's a, and of course, I live in a place called Columbus, which is sort of the antithesis for Native Americans. Well, not sort of. Columbus was the antithesis to Native <laughs> Americans. Oh, and he yes, was so true. a bad. Well, no, he never immigrated, but he would be one of the people that did not come and improve the lives of the people who lived here. As they say, the caravan of terror that always seems to get started up before every election. Uh, <laughs> to come get us, took our gerbs. Like, um, you know, uh, what? They, they didn't have the electrified fence of the INS because he was busy singing... What Stonehenge or because <laughs> he did say that little break when they yes. when he got his promotion, he's like, let the mm -hmm. next guy deal with it. Yeah, makes sense. Pass pass it down to the next uh, sap. Poor sap, huh? Yep. You had some things to say, or at least I think you do about how fucking stupid some of our. Uh, should we say stupid? Should we say ignorant? Or both? I don't know, man. <clears throat> well, I mean, there, you know, there was a time, and and, and I don't, um, I don't know how much, you know, the immigration policies have specifically changed, but I mean, there was a time when, you know, this country was set up in for it, it, unless uh, maybe we're romanticizing, you know, but I, it seems like at, at one point we actually wanted people here to kind of help out and take on the burden of the heavier jobs and build the nation up. And well, I mean, it's obviously a super rich nation. You know, we're, it, it, it's hard to complain. Like you said earlier, first world problems, you know, it's, it's difficult to complain. And, and, and if people still want to come here as, as fucked up as, as we are now and as divided as we all seem to be, especially if you listen to people talk about how divided we are, right? Yeah. But how bad, you know, it's almost like, system well, is how bad our education and it, system and it is. Bad. And it is. <laughs> Quality <laughs> of life, is, public yeah. transit. Really, a long, long time ago, I st stopped romanticizing how perfectly wonderful and awesome America was. And just sort of wonder what it is that would make a person want to come here. And so often it's because our government has destroyed their country. Or helped. <laughs> well, that's what that's what's so frightening, isn't it? You got to be very, very cautious and vigilant, right? About when you start hearing people talking about, you know, dog whistle statements like, um, "Oh, I don't know, certain groups are poisoning the blood of our country." And oh, yeah. you heard those exact words in the late '30s somewhere over in Europe. It it does kind of put you on edge a little bit. My angry politicians complaining. About you don't listen to them much, but you know the band No Effects. Sure. Um, yeah, my uh, yeah, my my late my late son-in-law was a huge fan of okay. theirs. Yeah, so they've got quite a few songs with lyrics like, "They turned out the fire underneath the melting pot. Red blood of America is starting to clot." I admire any immigrant that comes to this country, except for yeah, Elon fair Musk. Enough. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. I guess I should say that. And I've got my doubts about uh, Melania Trump's special visa that she got to get into the country. My main problem is the hypocrisy of people that like to pull up the ladder once they get somewhere. Uh, the people that pay for politicians or the people that marry politicians who try to get rid of the same things that their families and their friends were 
gifted to to have because mm-hmm. immigrating mm-hmm. most places aside like after getting there if you get there if you survive the trip you know with right. f- uh, fucking texas politicians putting barbed wire in the river and drowning kids and yeah. whatever the fuck um once you get somewhere then there's all the fucking paperwork and how many people do you know that complain about immigrants do you think could pass the citizenship test? <laughs> not probably none. I mean, I'm sure there's <laughs> probably a grand yeah. grand total of none. <laughs> so, you know, you got to love America. You got to speak well, the language. Well, which, which of the, <laughs> which of the languages that we've tried to snuff out? Yeah, I, but you, you know, a lot, a lot of this, a lot of this um, attitude toward immigration I, it's nothing new, you know? I mean, if you think yeah. about it, when we had, like, Irish immigrants here that were, like, the backbone of the New York area and different parts of the country, you know, I don't think it's a coincidence that they used to call, you know, police trucks paddy wagons. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's nothing new, man. I, I am looking through rose-colored glasses at the past a little bit. It's, that Things haven't changed that much, right? And now it's a lot easier, though, to kind of identify darker skins right so that there is that because back then they they if you had darker skin you weren't immigrating by choice you were talking about it being a rich country built you know built on the backs of people who were either brought here or subjugated here um it's fucked up man and all the cone heads want to do is play golf and consume mass quantities. Right. What's wrong with that, man? Come on. I mean, and then if we want to get into it, that guy that's trying to throw him out of the country the whole time, he had all those oh, yeah. skills that people didn't have here. I am ranting. I am sorry, dude. I tried to chill out for the last few hours, and I'm just kind of ranting at you. Is it bad? No, you've got you've got a lot going on, man. <laughs> There's a me uh like a, i don't know if it's a meme somebody took the movie poster for immaculate yeah. the one with like the side profile of her standing there and put okay. somebody's like this woke woman like just this rant what? about sydney sweeney come on and wokeness what? and all this other shit i'll get out of here I'll, I'll find it later <laughs> on, I, I tried to do a really quick <laughs> half paying attention search, but I started to get Uh distracted and I want to focus on the you and me conversation, but there is, it's going around and I don't know if you've left Twitter yet, but it, I still kind of keep my eyes on it. As long as Mm -hmm. my phone, I stopped updating the app and it still says Twitter and it doesn't say X. X. And (laughs) as, as long as it's Twitter, X. I can check it for hockey scores and yelling at politicians right. and stuff, but ah, it's mostly it's mostly bots and porn and angry right wing people. And there's oh just a lot of like everything's woke. They're uh-huh. still saying woke, except for now. There's a little bit more of that. Um, what's the new three letter thing they hate? Eti <sighs> or uh, man? D-E-I. You're educating. You're yeah. educating me, as always. <laughs> D- DEI is yeah. the new C- CRT. Remember how everybody was yelling about CRT last, like two years ago? No. <laughs> you know? Not at all. Critical no, race I'm theory? Of, you didn't hear them say critical race oh, theory? Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I've got a fellow podcaster that said a few things about that that pissed off some listeners that I had to settle down. So we had... we. We had that. Okay, cool. I see. I see what you're getting at. So All right. CRT. Now, I, I didn't put two and two together, man. I, I feel like they usually were complaining about it, saying c- critical race theory, but yes, now it's DEI that people are DEI. well. And, and this isn't just everybody. This is Let me generic right wing okay. people, you know, like Twitter and Fox News oh. and. Trump and our, our politicians. I'm not saying every type of right wing person, just the ones that are on my radar. So, do you know what DEI stands for? And it's a horrible yes, thing. Yes, I it's do. Ruining it's ruining the country. It's it's Dominus Evictus Invictorium, there right? It's Latin. Yes, yeah. secret society, right? 
the the <laughs> what 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 is that society that used to meet? What what was that called? Help Stone me out here, cutters. man. No, the, 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 the hedge or no, the oh. grove. Oh, the Bohemian grove. grove. Yes, that shows up in Late Night with the Devil. Oh, uh-oh, oh. another spoiler. They probably, <laughs> but, they probably still meet. Probably, probably. Oh, but I, but I digress, dude. I'm sorry, man. I, I no, I have absolutely no idea what that could stand for. All right. Well, D is for diversity. Okay. And then there's equity and inclusion. And that is the thing that is ruining our country by, yeah. Uh, okay. Based on the idea that recruiting and supporting workers of various back backgrounds is in integral to a company's success and in companies' policies and initiatives designed to help all employees feel welcomed and equipped to perform their jobs at a high level. That is what, uh, like the Marjorie Greens and the Lauren Boberts and the, what's that senator from Wisconsin or Florida that looks like an alien, Ron Johnson, uh, <laughs> Trump and Charlie Kirk and Ben Shapiro uh -huh. and all those fucks are very upset about DEI and how harmful it is. Uh, well, there goes uh, there goes the United Federation of Planets. I guess Star Trek uh, isn't going to happen. I think it will end up with Dupe. Is that what it was hey. from Futurama? The Democratic I... Order of Planets. <laughs> it sound, I don't know, but it sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I, I imagine uh, your friend whose name starts with a P has probably ranted about. DEI before. Well, I mean, I'll have to, I guess I'll have to keep my ear to the ground a little more on that part, you know, cause, um, yeah, the last, uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping he learned his lesson after saying something about critical race theory, but we shall see. We shall see, especially how long's it, uh, it hasn't been too long since you've all recorded, but it could be on his yeah, mind. Yeah, now we've got, um, could be. I'll um, like I said. I'll keep my ear to the ground tomorrow night when we record. People were blaming the uh, the cargo ship that crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The two mm -hmm. weirder things I heard were, well, a couple th weird things I heard were it was done on purpose to distract people from Puff Daddy. And all right, the, the other one was sure. It was the result of it was supposed to distract people from something awesome and wonderful that Trump did, and the other one was it's because the mayor of Baltimore is a person of color, and apparently it's all his fault that a cargo ship crashed into a bridge. So DEI. Wow. Here, there's just pictures <clears throat> okay. of their mayor on the news talking about the dead people and the disaster. And people are just like, this is what happens when you do DEI. DEI. Not to be confused with DWI. Yeah. But they probably say that in that way, sort of the way with that sour taste, like some people say woke. Because if you say yes. Yes. inclusion or diversity mm -hmm. maybe some people can get away with that i guess because there's some people that are still yeah fuck diversity inclusion and equity it's hard to it's hard for someone to sell their side well you that's know, kind of what i was on, thinking on that's like those words. You, well when you mentioned all three of those those words i'm like that's three things that we should all be aspiring towards so where's the disconnect here Kind of hard to argue with that, isn't it? I mean, not quite sure where we're going here. Like, people got really mad when people were talking about equality. <clears throat> so then it was like, oh, okay, well, oh, actually God. a better word would be equity. No equality in America, no, yeah. right? No equity in America. Absolutely not. Go somewhere else for that shit. Okay. Scratch the words off the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Some other dumb shit Nazis say. Uh, but so anyway, ah, <laughs> uh, man, I'm just, 
Uh, you got me envisioning the Statue of Liberty re- remade with a giving a salute. <laughs> no. Yeah. God, could you imagine? Well, I know, but dude, that's 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 one of the ultimate symbols of bringing people into America to help be part of the, you know, the the joint vision that we're supposed to be having here, right? So just like the irony, dude, the irony of it, and then I don't know. It's just like <clears throat> it's it, if you if you look at the numbers, do you do you really think that it's when you're looking at at unemployment as low as it is and people being concerned about, you know, like you said, health benefits and things of that nature, that a bigger base of GDP would certainly contribute to us being able to do all that. Not to mention, if you happen to be a hawk, it'll help contribute to our ability to, you know, quote unquote, protect ourselves. But what's, what's, What's wrong with more people coming in that actually want to work and contribute? I just, I don't, I don't understand the the, the problem here. I, I, I don't. It, it can't be as simple as as skin color, can it? I mean, honestly, am I being like I, really naive here? No, I think that there's been a you know we're we're, we're sold a lot of bullshit because you know of the structure of the systems that we grew up in but i think it's also a lot of fancy words for the real people that really rant about oh immigrants and people coming into our country it is i think bigotry and racism but they say it's because of their job because that doesn't make them sound like a big piece of shit it's that you well, still sound like a piece of shit. I don't know what the right right word for it is. But, it's it's a it's a it's not. I don't know. I don't know anybody that's is like worried about an immigrant that taking their jobs that also doesn't say other racist and bigoted shit. You know, it's not just yeah. I can work I can see that. <laughs> it's no, not, no. I I'm, I, I'm with I'm with you. But as as far as re, you know, real life. Um, uh, execution of what's really going on here and, and and what the truth is as it were okay so i'm like an hour and a half <clears throat> from mar-a-lago now okay do you think that uh you know not to pick on the big orange guy but do you think he kind of really knows what's really going on but just sort of says one thing just to rally votes from lowest common denominator i mean that's all i can figure out the guy's got to be a he's got to be a master of manipulation right uh, he's charismatic that's for sure. And I would say there's there's definitely some some racism or at least documented racist acts, but I think a lot he really doesn't give a shit. He just hates everybody except for himself. Terrible way to live. I mean, it seems a miserable miserable life. Kind of like Scrooge. Every smile <laughs> looks kind of fake. Yeah. The horrible things that he does to us and he says he wants to do to us, I think, reflect how horrible he feels. And he gets no pity because so much of his horribleness is brought on by himself and his selfishness. But I think it's also, I mean, what? I'm pretty sure it was in the newspaper that his dad was arrested at a Klan rally when he was younger. He was convicted of, like, racist housing practices. Yes, the, I heard all about that. Heard that all about that. There's the... Uh, you know, just the the lack of exposure to different types of people, I think, doesn't help anybody to live that sort of sheltered life. I'm sure most of his life, everybody besides like smarmy rich fucks, every immigrant that he mostly came across was like a servant or, you know, in some sort of uh, economical lower capacity to him. Um, But 
you know, he says he hates immigrants, but at least I think two of his wives were immigrants. So it's That's back right. to the back That's to right. the hypocrisy thing. And um, so, yeah, I, I, this is an election year. It's bound to talk about one of the things that the Republican Party runs on every single year, which is hate, 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 um, hate. Immigrants hate the LGBTQ plus community. Hate. I don't even know what I. I haven't really seen anything in any the cone of the heads. platforms. Hatred hate the cone, the cone heads. heads. Speaking of which, do you know else who comes from <clears throat> France? The Statue of Liberty. <laughs> That's right. So the cone heads. I mean, yeah. What? Uh, so they they do the journey instead of you know crossing a water border or you know climbing over a wall and they didn't yeah they didn't need the uh cartel to get them here right because yeah. everybody knows that the cartel controls the borders over there which is another big question of why don't we open the fucking borders it's kind of like when you stop the war on drugs you sort of squeeze a lot of drug dealers out of jobs and then you know, now now as that's slowly starting to change a little bit, they're having to find other things to do. So, I mean, there's an easy solution to that, right? What would be the worst? I, this is going to sound radical. I better be careful. Why? <laughs> what would be the worst thing that could happen, dude, if they just opened the borders one day, man? Do you think the country would go up in flames in a single day or what? Well, you know, the Back in the day, we had open borders, and we we had we got all these uh, colonizers over here. There is that. <laughs> we got fucking pilgrims. A caravan right. of pilgrims came and took our jobs. syphilis. <laughs> yep, they brought syphilis and really oh, all yeah. these all the people that were too crazy religious for Europe came here. Oh, that's right. That's and, right. Uh, spread spread the gospel of Jesus through violence as is the best way to, of course yeah to share the ideas of like love and stuff and yeah so the code heads didn't do that they but they did get attacked by the American government as soon as they came to America they were stranded here with no support group but through their kindness and their generosity and their their friendliness to others they built their lives up they made friends with all kinds of stand-up comedians that ran different businesses <laughs> that's right and the who's who of, of, of 90s early 90s comedy adam sandler selling fake identities another hole in the whole immigrants or whatever thing is a person who fully goes through the bureaucracy and uh, immigrates, pays taxes, and just works, mm -hmm. whatever, like everybody else. But then if somebody is in this country against some of the legalities, they're paying taxes but getting none of the benefits. That's right. Yeah, because the taxes come out. <laughs> yeah, the taxes come <laughs> Whether out. Whether you like it or not. <clears throat> So yeah, it's um, it's crazy, man. They're paying people or people that are not here legally. The bottom line is they're paying a lot more into the system and getting a lot, a lot less out of the system than just about any of us that have been here our whole lives, man. I mean, that's just the truth of it. You know, statistics don't lie. That's that's kind of how the system is set up, man. Yeah. So you know, like you said, get here, pay to get here, and then pay and pay again. But you know, again, like you said. You know, the American government, the CIA, probably hasn't helped this fact, right? But you've got despots and warlords all over the world making life hell for everybody. You've got, you know, one country that's invading another in Europe. You've got, you know, another um, particular country that's already got, you know, people crowded into a tiny little open-air prison – and so what are they going to do now? Well, let's just bomb the fuck out of them while we've got them stuck there. So it's just the world is fucked up there. And I mean, I'm trying not to get too negative here, man. But yeah, you're right. If like you said, why would they come here? <laughs> well, that just goes to show you how bad things are elsewhere, man. Yep. I mean, 
we our uh, our country and some of the other big ones have definitely stripped a lot of the natural resources of of other countries and you know crushed democratically elected leaders especially if they have leftists or socialist leanings and we re- we we also need to worry lance about you know all of the people sneaking across the border responsible for over 96% of fentanyl seizures. Oh no, I'm sorry. Oh, no doubt. No, 96% of fentanyl uh-huh. seizures were from people crossing through the normal ports of entry. Uh, are you are you being serious right now? Yeah, 96 over 96% <laughs> of fentanyl okay. that came into the country was from <sighs> like shipping containers and ships Mm -hmm. and trucks and cars and people driving across the border. I mean, there's Mm -hmm. been three or four instances where Columbus police were caught smuggling fentanyl. Like it's not immigrants. It's caught. If you're worried about fentanyl Mm -hmm. getting into your neighborhood, look, look twice at that cop. Not. Yeah. Makes sense, man. Yeah. It's probably not the person who's coming, just trying to make the, Make a little bit of money to send back home to their families, right? Oh, in 2021, I had this. The Cato Institute. Uh, mm-hmm. we've, we, we know them. The uh, libertarian right-wing Cato Institute said that in 2021, 86% of fentanyl trafficking were U.S. citizens. Well, that doesn't surprise me. You know, I mean, they've got the connections, right? Yeah, it's easier to get across. Of course. Who's going to question you? Yeah. Here's my passport. Don't look in my trunk. Right. You know, here's my badge. I'm going to let you accidentally <laughs> right. see my badge when I show you my ID. You know, and so the gun can, that I've got. <laughs> yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We're all in the fraternity. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. So I that was another thing that I, I wanted to get to uh, while we were having moments of focus was the other bullshit about like, oh, the the illegals bringing in all the fentanyl. No, not right. really. Yeah, she's she's sneaking across the border. She's pretending to be pregnant. You know, don't 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 believe that that's really a pregnant woman with three kids. That's a that's a big old batch of fentanyl that she's got taped to her stomach as she crosses the border, just trying to evilly kill all of our children. Right. <laughs> Definitely make cops have seizures when they look at it, unless unless they're the <laughs> ones that brought it in. They 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 seem they need to teach their friends the mm-hmm. ones the ones that actually do the smuggling. But yeah, the police who do all the the ninety six or not ninety six percent. Sorry, that was the total was just legal ports of entry was ninety six percent eighty six percent. Okay, was U S citizens. I don't know what percentage there is of police that have done it, but numerous police have been caught and convicted for smuggling fentanyl into the country. Wow, man, that's that's why I come on the show with you, man. I'm always educated. I had I had no idea <laughs> about any of those stats. Got some statistics and I wow. got some statistics from, you know, sources that I don't like. <laughs> Just so I'm not like cherry picking everything from Mother mm-hmm. Jones or whatever the fuck. <laughs> right. What else should we talk about? I know we're we're coming up on uh, a time where we could we could cut it, and you could go enjoy time with your your lovely wife. I read an interesting article this morning. Was it the? Which one was it? It's on. It's on a completely different topic, and okay. I, I, I'm not quite sure how to how to process it yet. But I can kind of see the validity of it. But have have you heard? You know, you're telling me about some new things that people are banding about. Have you heard that uh, a lot of people are referring to Gen Z now as the tool belt generation? The tool belt. The tool belt generation. No. Uh, let me see if I can figure so, out. Why? Okay. Why would they be called tool belt? This is Gen Z. Yeah. Be- yeah. Bear in mind, this is Gen Z. Uh, Gen Z. Yeah. So these are like you know our current what high school graduate level folks and people around that age up to maybe 
what would be considered, you know, and I'm using air quotes here, you know, college age. Okay. It's either, well, I got, well, I don't want to find out who's calling them that. It's either okay. because they, there's more people going into skilled trades than college because of how fucked our, uh, bingo, bingo. bingo. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. You nailed it. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah, and that's, that's, and that's, that's a, a good nickname. It's a good thing. But that's a good thing, right? Because we, you know, we need more people in, you know, skilled. Like you always, when's the last time you saw a, a post-apocalyptic movie or a zombie movie, right? And the and the people that were that were stuck sweeping the streets and stuff like that, you know, were like MBAs and, and things of that nature. And then the people who actually knew how to do things ended up really running it things yeah. because now you're in a life or death situation. So learning those skills is great. I, I could definitely see the importance of that, but I don't know, man, at the same time, it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit disheartening, right? It, it just shows you how, how fucked up our education system is now, right? And how expensive it is to get a college degree and how you continue to pay these student loans forever and ever and ever and ever and never get out from under the yoke of it. So anyway, it's just kind of interesting, man. I thought, but but yeah, that that's that's what I was reading this morning, man. A Wall Street Journal article, tool belt generation. Um, you know, I can see some good to it. I can see some bad to it, but it's definitely interesting. Yeah, uh, that that is that that is interesting. I feel like there was a lot of older generations casting dispersions on uh, the millennials for not having a lot of skill trades. Ah, okay. Uh, which I don't uh, even know how I fair that. that is to say, but there, there was like a right. general, Oh, you know, that generation doesn't know how to change a tire. They pay somebody to change mm -hmm. a tire. That generation doesn't know how to whatever. Of course, I don't know if that's just because I am either the earliest I can be as a millennial or the last year of Gen X. Yes, that's right. <laughs> uh, so I, a lot of, you know, older people around me were the type that would say, all oh, these kids don't know how to do anything. Uh, that's right. Things, <laughs> things change, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we're coming around full circle. So yeah, the, the next. Ah, oh! So maybe we're headed into a World War II scenario. Oh, oh. I got to be quiet. <laughs> well, we'll see. I mean, shit, there's, I mean, yeah, I don't know. There's. I know it looks bad, doesn't it? And then the, the vanishing resources and cli all, all the problems that climate change is bringing. And that's another problem with having these closed borders, right? You know, because. Yeah. The more you build up, a, you know, you put like a Mentos in a bottle of Coca-Cola, right? Close the lid and really, really, really shake it. What's going to happen when you open that lid, man? It's scary. And yeah, that's a lot of super storms, much more wild weather. Yeah, it's, it's fucked up, man. Maybe we should go Yeah. back to Remulac. I wonder if they would take us. <laughs> I mean, we can always we can always battle that monster in the pit, right? <laughs> if we, if we make it through, yes, we get to do whatever we want to do, right? Didn't he say your your Dave Thomas told him your wish is I command or something like that? Anything yep. you ask for, save Earth. <laughs> Why would you save Earth? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, another thing why I think it's ridiculous and perfectly fitting to talk about coneheads and to talk about immigrants. He just wants to make his kid happy and Oh man. Have her I, be I, around I was... the people and live the life that she wants to live around the people she knows. Well, that's, that's right. That's right. That's yeah, when important. when they went in they went into that um that little segment there where they were showing her growing up. <laughs> I, sh I shed a tear, man. That was that was a pretty poignant little uh, segment that they made there, you know. Yeah. Oh, and with Paul Simon on it too. That just adds. <laughs> Paul a Simon bit adds folks, a lot folksiness it? to it. <laughs> That's right. 
And yeah, not a bad movie. A lot of people shit on this movie, man. I I I didn't hate it. I I kind of I really enjoyed it. I I, I definitely loved the uh, the skits on Saturday Night Live better. Like it, this is definitely something that was better, you know, like in a five to seven minute format. But it was a fun movie, and they got enough talented comedians in there. People that you see all the time now, like what Drew Carey getting into the cab and. Oh right! God, I mean, we could talk forever about all the cameos, right? Yeah. But yeah, I I I liked the movie. I think I liked it, you know, more when I the first few times I saw it. I think it still stands up. There's not a lot of ooh, that joke didn't 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 hold up. <laughs> yeah, that, that joke didn't hold right. up. Or I have no idea what this joke is or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, like. I tried to get AJ to watch uh, Blazing Saddles with me, right? And she was like, I can't watch this. She says, this is just oh. too much for me. All the way, And I said, come on, that. babe. It's And then I said, well, look, Richard Pryor co-wrote it, so yeah, you're a, it's okay. You can watch it, babe. He you don't have to feel sheriff. that guilty. <laughs> she was just, like, really offended. <laughs> uh, you know, Mel Brooks has that special ability i think it's the intelligence in its comedy because it's not just like racism racism it's Mm -hmm. making a point it's not saying something awful to get a shock they really need their sheriff but they'll treat him like shit when they don't need him and uh anyway People that we really need, but a lot of people treat like bad people will treat like oh, shit when they don't need them. Full circle, full circle. Yes, <laughs> we should. <laughs> let's let's wrap up. I think we can uh, at a more leisurely time have another fun episode. Not too far in the future. I am. I was looking at the episodes you threw my way, but then my house flooded, and I just sort of dealing with things. But I'm really glad that you found the time to sit down with me tonight to talk about immigration and the Coneheads. I always, always like talking with you. And I always learn a lot. Like, all these things that you brought up, I don't think I've heard too many of them before. So now I've got some things to look into and listen for. So when I'm, you know, doing my other podcast, I might listen for some buzzwords. Lance from The Horror Returns. Look up The Horror Returns. If- it, it's so easy now that we have a website that's got like all the links on it. It's just 